Yesterday, it was widely reported that uh, the High Court ruled that former Health Secretary Matt Hancock broke technical equality rules when he appointed Dido Harding to a senior role in the government's pandemic response. Now, think tank the Runnymede Trust won one claim against the government that the recruitment had been conducted without sufficient, quote, open competition in the middle of the pandemic. But the reports missed off a significant part of this story. The Runnymede Trust's portion of the case was one small technical one. In reality, the vast bulk of this case failed. The part brought forward by the celebrity lawyer Jolyon Morn, someone who's perhaps best known by the public for killing a fox with a baseball bat in his garden on Boxing Day 2019, all while wearing his wife's kimono. Now, here's what the judgment said. The collective effect of the conclusions set out during this judgment is that the claim brought forward by the Good Law Project, that's Jolyon Morn's project, fails in its entirety. Now, the claim by the Runnymede Trust fails on grounds one and three, but succeeds on ground two only in two cases, appointing the interim chair of the National Institute for Health Protection and the director of testing as well. So small technical wins there, but in large part, this case failed. But the media didn't really report that particularly widely. However, one journalist who did was Christian Calgi, the senior reporter at the Guido Fawkes website, who I'm delighted to say can join us now. Um, Christian, first of all, Jolion Morn, the celebrity lawyer who brought forward the bulk of this case, lost. Uh, and, and yet it's been spun as some kind of win. What went on? Well, I think the problem is that uh, Jolyon is becoming ever more proactive in spinning his uh, claimed victories because we've spent the best part of the last five years uh, pointing out how often this guy loses. And, of course, that isn't very good for raising donations. Uh, the reality is that the Running Meat Trust, uh, which is a, you know, a sort of a pressure group that, that um, deals with equality issues, brought this case against the appointment of Dido Harding. Uh, on, on equalities grounds. And what Jolly and Morn did with the Good Law Project was they sort of uh, latched on to the case as a whole uh, with an additional argument that the, the, the appointment was, was cronyism, that, that she was only appointed because she was, mates with, uh, she was mates with Matt Hancock. And in fact, you know, the reason that the court uh, said the case failed in its entirety was because there was no evidence whatsoever to support this allegation of cronyism being the thing that got Dido Harding the job. This is a really, really important distinction here, is it not? Because when people hear those reports and other broadcasters were, were, were gleefully singing these reports yesterday, saying that uh, oh, the, the, uh, the, the equalities um, failed in this and, and sort of all these people were appoint, appointed without due process. But actually, this wasn't cronyism at all. The High Court specifically said it wasn't cronicism in terms. And... I, I wonder, going one step further, if we should really expect there to be the normal process for putting out to, to tender, if you want, the, the, the recruitment process to go through every single stage, that laborious normal recruitment process in the middle of a global pandemic. Is that really reasonable? Yeah, exactly. I mean, most people... Uh, if they dug into the detail on this, would think it was pretty reasonable to expect in, I think it was April 2020, the Department of Health wanted to expedite appointment processes on uh, fighting the pandemic as quickly as possible. And actually, the judgment was pretty fair minded in that. In fact, the you know, as you said, the Runnymede Trust actually brought three arguments against the appointment process, only one of them case B was found in favour of. And that was about the, uh, you know, the process uh, behind the recruitment rather than the recruitment themselves. So, you know, there's no issue here. Dino Harding is not, uh, you know, going to be engulfed in scandal. And actually, I think most people who whose lives were saved by decisions uh, by the Department of Health in terms of a vaccine rollout are not going to be quite that upset that, for example, the Department of Health, Matt Hancock, didn't uh, take into account uh, ethnic minorities or disability candidates as much as they perhaps should have. Um, but there's a, you know, there's also, I think, a wider problem 
here for Jolly and Maughan and the Good Law Project, because one uh, interesting aspect of the ruling was that the judge, uh, in effect, said that the Good Law Project cannot have you know skin in the game on all these issues which uh, groups are supposed to when bringing a judicial review and it sort of really damaged the credibility of the organization as a whole and i think increasingly going forwards the good law project is going to be finding it more and more difficult to bring these time wasting uh, you know public money wasting uh, cases against the government um, because they're just sort of busybodying and they, they're not really that important to the organisation itself. It is fascinating. I do wonder who it's supposed to help uh, relitigating all of this stuff that in the middle of a pandemic, not enough ethnic minority or disabled candidates were considered. I mean, uh, Dido Harding was a CEO of a major corporation. I think it's, a, it's probably a problem that some of our major corporations, not many of them are led by ethnic minority or disabled people. But that, that, I suppose that makes it harder to recruit them. And in the middle of a pandemic, trying to do all of that seems... A little bit of a stretch. Well, for now, uh, Christian Cowgy, senior reporter at Guido Fawkes, thanks for talking us through that important story and important corrective to what was going on elsewhere in the media.